folks, uh, last night there was another horrific shooting, this time in Thousand Oaks, California. And I want to say that the pain and the horror of that community, what they're experiencing right now is unimaginable. But for so many people, it's become all too common in America. And Americans, whatever their political party, know that now, now is the time for action to keep our community safe. And my next guest tonight has an F rating from the NRA. And she was just reelected as the U.S. Senator from New York. Please welcome Kirsten Gillibrand. Senator, th thanks for being here. Mm -hmm. the, the last time you were here was just six days after Parkland. Yeah. And, and here we are again um, uh, talking about another horrific shooting. Back then, uh, you talked about um, the lack of action on gun control and that the NRA is just yeah. outspending everybody. What, yeah. what, what do you think the chances are and what do you think should be done now? What, what's the opportunity now? Well, it is extraordinarily heartbreaking, and it's infuriating because Congress literally has done nothing in the face of gun death after gun death in communities all across this country. Um, but, and it is because of the greed, the, the, the greed of the gun manufacturers and the greed of the NRA. But I do believe things are changing. And the reason why I believe that is because we had candidates run in this last election who ran on this issue. We had Lucy McBath run in the outskirts of Atlanta, run a race. A woman, a woman who is very much part of the mom's movement, who won a race because she lost her son to gun violence. It was very much part of her campaign, and she just won. We had a woman, uh, Jennifer Wexton, run in Virginia on common sense gun reform, the place where the NRA is located. In her district. In her district. So you saw candidates speaking truth to power on this very issue. And we need to get money out of politics. You have to get the money out of politics because it overwhelmingly corrupts the system. And so I'm hopeful because not only do you have new candidates who ran and won on these issues, in places, you know, in this district where Lucy ran, we didn't win it last time. We had a great campaign, but we didn't win it because she ran on this issue. So you have people speaking this truth, and you also uh, have people like Emma Gonzalez speaking out and calling BS every time a politician gives her excuse why they won't take on the NRA. And we have a lot more work to be done. We have to flip, obviously, the Senate to be able to do whatever the House could do, that common sense reform. But I think this country is in a place where we will fight this until we get it done, because you need these basic reforms. Jeff Sessions uh, was fired uh, yesterday, and um, his replacement, Whitaker, uh, has been appointed by the president. Do, do you believe that Whitaker's appointment is constitutional? No, I don't. Uh, it, because he is such a senior position, you need advice and consent of the Senate. Even while the Senate is out of session? Correct. Uh, there was a succession plan. It should have been Rosenstein, and they not only disregarded that, but then put someone in place who has not had uh, hearings and approval by the Senate. Um, uh, several senators, including uh, Republican Jeff Flake, have said that he should recuse himself. He should. What are your odds that that's going to happen? None. I mean, I, I just, I, I don't, I mean, the, the president put in place someone who has already said publicly that he doesn't believe in the Mueller investigation, called it a witch hunt. You know, he, he's, he's a, a lackey of the president. I mean, he's been chosen because he is a political pawn. And so he shouldn't be in this role. He should have advice and consent of the Senate. But I hope that we can get back into session. One of the first things we do is pass the bipartisan bill that will protect the Mueller investigation. Good luck. Because <laughs> you're going to need it. Yeah. You have a new children's book. You have a new children's book, uh, Myra Kalman, beautiful illustrator. Gorgeous. Um, it's called Bold and Brave. What, what's it about? So it's about the suffrage movement. It's almost in 2020 will be 100 years since women earned the right to vote. Yep. And November 2nd. I, I, wanted, <laughs> I wanted to write a book about these women because it's 10 vignettes about women who 
did the hard work, the impossible work of getting women the right to vote. Some never even got to see the right to vote themselves. Mm -hmm. And it's generation after generation building on what each other have done. And it's stories about bravery, of courage, of never giving up, of stick to itiveness that I think is as relevant today as it's ever been. And in these pages, uh, little girls and little boys will see themselves and see what's possible if you do uh, use your voice, if you speak out, if you speak up, uh, and if you never, ever give up. And so we have amazing suffragists like Harriet Tubman. We've got um, Sojourner Truth. Here's We've got girl. Susan B. Anthony. That's Here's me at five. Yay! <laughs> Well, this was the year of the women. Yes. Not only running, but uh, the uh, female voters actually yes. made a huge difference this so year. So let's talk about that because the right to vote is so important, and we saw it in full force in this election. You have Stacey Abrams fighting so hard today to make sure every vote in Georgia counts, and she's going to make sure there's a recount, and she's going to make sure everyone's voice is heard. And so this book is for our kids to read. So our children know how important their voices are, how important this, this right was so hard to earn mm -hmm. that that's why Stacey Abrams is the suffragist of today. She's making sure every person in Georgia's vote will count. Uh, we're having recounts not only in Georgia, we're having one in Florida, and we are having one in Arizona, and my dear friend Kirsten Cinema is ahead by 2,000 votes. So excited! So, now I know... I know you've been saying, you've been saying for a long time now that you don't want to talk about 2020 because you're concentrated on 2018, the midterms are over, what are you concentrating on now? <laughs> Is there another election that you might be concentrating on, Senator? Well, um... For now? So... That I do think it's an important question, It and is an important question, that's why I asked it. Yes. <laughs> so I believe it is a moral question for me. And I believe in right versus wrong. And until this election, I actually thought that wrong was winning. And as I've traveled across my state, across the country for all these candidates, um, I've seen the hatred and the division that President Trump has put out into the, our country. And it has called me to fight as hard as I possibly can to restore the moral compass of this country. Um, our country was founded on the principles that we should care about one another, that we believe in the golden rule, um, that I should care about your kids or your kids or your kids as much as I care about my own. And so I believe right now that every one of us should figure out how we can do whatever we can with our time, with our talents, to restore that moral decency, that, that moral compass, and that truth of who we are as Americans. So I will promise you I will give it a long, hard thought of consideration. <laughs> I will do that. That close. Senator, thank you for being here. Bold and Brave is available Tuesday. Senator Kirsten Gillibrand, everybody. We'll be right back.